This video is brought to you by patreon.com slash worst take. Get access to exclusive live streams and discord servers, on screen shout outs and early access to some videos when you join now. Help make sure that we can continue to make content like this by supporting the Patreon. Links are in the description down below. All right, so the Browns signed a quarterback. Art Modell rule has been used to for the city to sue the Browns about this move to Brook Park. And we're going to have a conversation about the impact that the booing is going to have and is it going to affect the Browns' ability to bring in free agent or draft players to the team. So let's jump into it. The first thing I want to talk about is Bailey Zapp being brought in um, off the Chiefs practice squad. Now, the key thing here is that he was brought in off the Chiefs practice squad, which means that he was brought into the Browns 53-man roster, which indicates that he's going to be active on game day. Uh, DTR is dealing with an injury. It is more serious than I think some people initially thought when it happened. I honestly thought when DTR went out the game, it was just an injury that they used to get an excuse to take him out the game so they could put Jameson. Seems like this injury is more serious. And again, with DTR, he gets injured a lot and he hasn't played that much, which is very concerning about DTR's prospects as a quarterback. Um, luckily, he's only a fifth-round pick, so if it works out, great. If it doesn't, great. Uh, with Bailey Zapp's going to be here, he's going to back up Jameis Winston. Um, and with Jameis Winston likely being the starter, I'm going to do a video where I get more in-depth about this with uh, Treshawn from SB Nation. But... With Jameis in there, I expect this offense to kind of revert mainly back to what they like to do um, with Jacoby Brissett. There's going to be some elements in there where you're going to see some Dorsey influence, especially like with how deep uh, Jameis likes to throw the ball. But it's going to mainly be a lot of play action, right? Jameis Winston is a play action quarterback. Um, this is a stat I bring up in my video with Trey Sean. I'll bring it up here. Jameis Winston's stats as a play action quarterback. Um, he's a 64% passer. He's thrown 5,212 passing yards on 556 passing attempts in play action. Um, 36 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, and 48.9% first down percentage in an 80 PFF grade in play action uh, concept. So Jameis has always been a pretty strong play action passer. To get it, bringing in Bailey Zapp indicates that you want to do even more play action passing the Browns are going to probably switch to that run heavy play action heavy style uh Kevin Stefanski style of offense probably for the rest of the season to be honest with you I think that's going to be the move for this team now the next bit of news here is that the Browns are being sued or or the city of Cleveland is threatening legal action against the Cleveland Browns. This is a I team report from Fox eight news in Cleveland. I'm um, coming from Ed and Peggy Gallag. They're saying that the Modell law, which grew out of the Browns franchise move to Baltimore in the nineties. Um, the law was created by former mayor Dennis Kucinich and says is that if the team wants to move the city or a private group should have a chance to buy the team. The Browns have said that they understand the law, but they consider the current plan different since they would be moving to Brook Park and staying in the region. So this is kind of a Hail Mary from the city, right? They're enacting the Modell law. The Modell law means that if the team wants to move outside the city of Cleveland, it had the Browns have to give the city or somebody else a chance to buy the team before they move it that is the law that they have now obviously the spirit of this law was more about if the browns left the city of cleveland um as a metropolitan area right like if they went to maybe columbus this would probably be a better argument or new york this would be a better argument there's also a question of if this law is going to hold up with a challenge from the courts if it even gets that far there's a good chance that it's not able to hold up 
with the challenge from the courts, even if this were the situation. Um, this is just a last ditch attempt by the city to stop the team from moving to Brook Park. I'm surprised at how hard the city has fought this. I assumed there was going to be some pushback on this, but the pushback by the city, it seems like they're pretty much crashing out um, on this whole thing with the team moving to Brook Park. Um, it, we'll see how this goes um, with the team. Their lease is what, up until 2028? So they'll be in Cleveland Brown Stadium until 2028. Um, and it's looking like this move to Brook Park is going to be a much, much more messy move than I think a lot of people originally thought it would be. Um, the city seems to really want to keep this team or this team uh, is stadium in that downtown location there. And they're going as far as to enact the Modell law to do it, which again, the Modell law says that if a team, if the team wants to move, the city or a private group should have a chance to buy them. That's the Modell law. Um, but I, I find it very hard to believe that the Browns are going to be forced to sell the team um, because they want to move to Brook Park, which is ultimately 10, 20 minutes outside the city limits of Cleveland and right across the street from the Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. It's going to be a very tough argument. Um, so don't know if this is going to just end up being more of a waste of time here. Um, it seems like the Haslam's are dead set on moving this team to Brook Park. It seems like the city really wants to fight it, but you know, I, I don't know if they're just fighting here to show that they're fighting or if this is like an actual strategic move here because it just doesn't feel like a great move in my opinion um, because there's just no chance that that law is going to be upheld. There's not really a strong chance that that law is going to be kind of be able to survive a challenge in the court or anything. It's just kind of far fetched here um, from the city standpoint. So that's what's going on with the team and, and the whole Brook Park Stadium thing. Look, man, this is going to get even messier. We haven't even gotten to the parts where they ask for money yet. Um, and they're going to ask for money sooner than later. So we'll see what goes on with that. Um, let's talk about the fallout of the booing. I think a lot of people have gotten their takes off about the fans booing and slash cheering Deshaun Watson being injured. Um, you know, a lot's been said. I think some people have made it out to be like the whole stadium boot. Like there's a lot of different takes about it. My opinion about the whole thing is that I blame Kevin Stefanski, Andrew Berry and, and uh, Jimmy Hassel for all of this. They created the powder keg that exploded on Sunday. They should be the ones that we're mad at. Instead, we're pointing the fingers at the players. The players are pointing the fingers at the fans. It's a very sad situation, but we really should look at the people who put the fans and the players on an inevitable collision course. And that's a damn shame because the connection between the players and the fans has always been a special part of the fandom of the Cleveland Browns. And I hope that that could be recovered in the coming years. But again, the people who put that connection in jeopardy aren't the players, aren't the fans. It's the people who created this situation that was inevitable um, with Deshaun Watson, especially at the point that they continued to hang on to Deshaun Watson. So you can wag your fingers at the fans, you can wag your fingers at the players, but let's be honest here. Let's talk about who really put this whole thing together. It's Kevin Stefanski, it's J Jimmy Haslam, and it's Andrew Barry. And if you want to throw Paul DePodesta in there, you can throw Paul DePodesta in there, whoever else you want to. But it's the front office and leadership of the Cleveland Browns who continued this Watson experiment when it was obvious that this thing was well past its due date um, and that bringing him back home in Cleveland would just create an ugly environment that they knew they were aware, aware that it was going to be an ugly environment and they decided to go forward with anyway. So that's really where my blame is. I'm not really into yelling at the fans or, or, or yelling at the players for the reaction to what was an impossible situation there on Sunday. Now let's talk about the fallout of that though, because I think that's a very different thing. Some fans are worried that because this fan base did that, that's going to have a serious impact on the Browns ability to draft sign free agents and retain their own players. Now, when it comes to the draft, I don't think that's going to be the case. These kids are in college. 
I don't think they care that much. Um, and honestly, college players just don't have the leverage to be able to be so offended that they're not going to play somewhere they get drafted. Most college players, if not all pl college players, are going to play where they're drafted. I know some people have made the point that this means that Shador Sanders and Deion Sanders are going to make sure they never play in Cleveland because the fans booed Deshaun Watson. I don't really think that's the case. I think if you're Shador Sanders and you're Dion, you know that this is a bottom line business and this is about if you can win games early in your career or not. And the decision on if they're going to put up a fight about being drafted somewhere is going to be about that. It's going to be about the position that you're put in to succeed on the football field and not necessarily the position you're put in to succeed with the fans. Um, at the end of the day, the Sanders family, Shador Sanders, Deion Sanders, they're going to bring their own fans with them wherever they go. So I don't think this is something that's on their mind, right? I know a lot of people thought that this would be like a Sanders family issue. Um, if the Browns want to draft Shador, it's going to come down to what the Sanders family thinks about Kevin Stefanski, Andrew Barry, and the Browns as an organization, not necessarily the people in the stands and if they're nice or mean or not. Um, because they kind of understand what situation they're in. And Shador, no matter where he's going to play, is going to be polarizing. There's going to be a bit of the fan base that's going to immediately embrace Shador and be super excited about it. There's going to be a bit of the fan base, no matter where he goes, it's going to be against it because they don't like Deion Sanders. Um, so that's going to be what that's going to be. And it doesn't really change whether he's drafted to Cleveland or Carolina. It's going to be what it's going to be with that. Um, you know, the only place I could really see it being different is like Atlanta, but they're not drafting a quarterback this year or like somewhere where Dion played like Dallas, but they're not drafting a quarterback this year. Like unless there's an area where like Dion has that special love, even like Colorado, Denver, you know, they have a quarterback that they drafted last year. So, um, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be for Dion, and it's going to be polarizing for them anyways. And I think they're aware of that. So I don't think they're looking at the situation like, oh, my God, the fans are mean. We can't draft them there. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but I think their decision is going to be more about the football stuff. And then when it comes to free agency, I don't think that's going to be as big as a deal as some people have made it out to be because I don't think free agents really care about that sort of thing unless they're coming back home or something like that. Right. Like most free agents are going to sign to whatever team they have they sign for for multiple reasons one money money's always the number one driver of free agency it's the whole point of free agency by the way is to get more money so money's the number one driver in free agency no matter what who offers you the best contract is always going to have a strong pull of influence on where you go um now it might not determine where you go entirely there's other factors that you want to consider how much different is the money that i'm getting from the top place that's offering me the most money to the place that's offering me the second most money and how much different is that opportunity but the money's the number one thing you want to make sure the money's right so money's going to be number one uh no matter what number two is going to be the situation right are you getting more playing time are you going to be featured more are you going to get that promotion that you wanted let's say you have a number two receiver now you get that number one receiver type responsibility like is that that's usually the number two thing that most players are looking at when they're determining whether they're going to play for a team. And then like the third thing that they're looking at is like, who do I know on the team? What relationships do I have within the building? All of those things. And then like very far down the list is like, how nice are the fans? I think that's just, you deal with that wherever you deal with that, you make your decision. So I don't think this is going to have that much of an effect with free agents or anybody not on the team who may join the team later. This isn't going to be a, a thing that people, really care about past like the next month um and that's not gonna make it that's gonna make it so that it's not that big of an impactful thing with free agency or draft i know a lot of people are worried about that where it does have an impact and where this thing we're booing and the ugly environment created on sunday does have an impact though is with the players on your roster because those are who you those are the players that you scarred in some way or hurt in some way with that reaction, right? We heard DeJuan Jones talk about how uncomfortable he was with it. Um, look, every player on this team was probably uncomfortable with it. 
even the ones you love, right? Nick Chubb was probably very uncomfortable with this. Just nobody stuck a microphone in his face and he didn't get to say anything. But this is not a comfortable situation for the players to be in. Like nobody, no player ever wants to be in a spot where the hometown team cheers a player on the team, especially the quarterback of the team, getting injured. It is an incredibly awkward and ugly place to be at if you're looking at this from the perspective of the players. And they're going to have a reaction to that that's going to be a bit more severe than anybody that you would sign in free agency or in, in the draft, right? Like, this might affect some people's ability to really want to give their all to the fan base. Now, they'll always give their all to their teammates, but their fan base and all that. Like, yeah, you're going to see some people who aren't going to interact with the fan base the same ever again because this was a very scarring moment for the people on that field. But those are the people who are going to be affected, right? And you have to worry about JOK. Is he going to uh, recover? Is, is the relationship that JOK has with the fans going to recover from this? Miles Garrett going to recover from this? Um, Denzel Ward going to recover from this, right? Like, are those guys going to be able to kind of let this go over time? And is the fan base going to be able to let this go over time? That's really the question. Those are really the people who are going to be impacted by this. It's the people who experienced it that are going to be the most bothered by it, especially when it comes to players. But if you're wondering if this is going to have an impact on the Browns' ability to sign players, I just don't think that's going to be the case. But that's all I got to say. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great day. Have a better night. Peace.